All right, we're going to be talking about diabetic polyneuropathy today. We're going to talk to you about what it is, the pathology of the disease, um, the signs and symptoms, some common physical therapy interventions, and some treatment options for patients with diabetic polyneuropathy. So to start, um, polyneuropathy or diabetic polyneuropathy, DPN, is um, nerve damage essentially that is caused by either type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Um, in general, neuropathy is a term for a variety of nerve conditions with a wide range of symptoms. With um, diabetic polyneuropathy, it's typically the nerves in the feet and lower extremities that are affected more often. Um, DPN is caused by chronically elevated glucose levels in the blood, um, hence its relation to diabetes and that disease. Patients with diabetes have issues controlling their blood glucose levels and those elevated blood, glu blood glucose levels, um, especially over time when they're chronically elevated, can cause issues with the nerves in the uh, lower extremities. Recent studies have shown, however, that consistent exercise intervention for patients with diabetic polyneuropathy symptoms not only helps maintain patient well-being, but also quality of living. So it's not necessarily something that doesn't go away or something that can't be managed or treated. Um, the pathology of this diagnosis stems from the elevated levels of glucose in the blood, like I talked about before, that negatively affects the nerves and the blood vessels. The exact cause of the way that the nerves are damaged isn't known for sure, but there's a few different theories on what could lead to that. One is the blood glucose levels being elevated, and that chronic elevation of the glucose in the blood causes an autoimmune response, which causes inflammation in the nerves, and that inflammation is what leads to that tingling kind of pain sensation in the toes and fingers and lower extremities. Blood glucose, or glucose in the blood also interferes with the nerve's ability to send signals back to the brain. So even if it's not necessarily just affecting the feeling and the sensation in the toes, it can also be blocking the nerves trying to send signals back to the brain. The third way that it could be, um, or the third way that DPN could be causing, or could be caused is from the glucose damaging the blood vessels in the toes um, and lower extremities. Um, obviously, we want as much blood to be delivered to the feet as possible, and so if the blood vessels are being damaged, even just little by little over time, that starts to add up and um, can really cause an effect on the tissue in that area. So that's the third way. So like I talked about before, um, both upper and lower extremities are affected, usually distally to, and moves proximally as time goes by. So you're going to start, typically patients will start with that neuropathy in their toes and it'll kind of work, their, work its way back up through the feet and if it gets bad enough, up more through the lower extremity of the legs. Um, like I also talked about before, it affects the nerves and the blood vessels. Just like with diabetes, since that's obviously the main cause of this, is um, if the diabetes itself isn't managed, then the neuropathy is going to get worse. But if the diabetes is managed well, then we can stop the progression of the neuropathy and even sometimes decrease it. Typically, also because of the nature of diabetes, there's a lot of different systems affected. It's not just the nervous system or um, the blood vessels that are affected. So 50% of people with the DPN experience symptoms, but the other half are asymptomatic or they only experience some numbness. So the symptoms vary according to which fiber is involved. So we have the small fibers and we have the large fibers. So um, the most common early symptoms are brought on by the small fibers and these include the pain and the diastasias, which is a burning sensation. So characteristically, this pain is tingling, burning, or it is shooting like an electric shock, and it gets worse at night. Does the neuropathic pain 
is usually accompanied by exaggerated response to a painful stimuli, which can lead to interference with the different daily activities. The invol involvement of large fibers causes distress and numbness, tingling without pain, and a loss of protective sensation. This loss of protective sensation is a large indicator of the presence of DPN and is also a risk factor for a diabetic foot ulceration because you don't have that um, cognitive initiative to protect your lower extremities and you can get ulcerations on your feet. So then other signs and symptoms include a sensory loss, ataxia, which is proprioceptive loss, and um, repetitive injuries due to, due to that neuropathic degeneration. So the most common form of diabetic polyneuropathy is sensory motor, which leads deficits in the distal sensory areas. Like Luke said, so it starts in your toes and it goes towards your feet and then up. So um, there's loss of perception of vibration and light touch with the large fibers, and then loss of temperature and pinprick, which, show, which are shown in these pictures, by the small fibers. There can also be paresis of the small muscles in your feet, which can lead to ankle weakness. So to obtain a diagnosis, patients with diabetes type 1 and 2 or 2 should be screened annual, annually for DPN. So some of these tests can include the use of a vibration tuning fork, which tests for the perception of vibration, and that tests the large fibers as we noted before. They can also do an electromyogram that um, tests the nerve conduction velocity. And then there's also a skin biopsy. So this top picture, shows a normal amount of nerve fibers that are in the skin, and then this bottom picture shows an abnormal amount, abnormal amount where there's a decreased number of nerve fibers towards the top of the skin. So then also in the skin biopsy, you will see degeneration, swelling in the, that con, swellings that contain axonal, or contain neurofilaments, atrophy in the axons, and then demyelination would also be seen. So as far as prognosis goes, diabetic polyneuropathy has a slow and chronic progression. So oftentimes, we will see painless ulcers on the weight-bearing areas, as well as calluses that come as a precursor to the ulcerations. And these ulcerations may also aid in a diagnosis if it is not already diagnosed. And the disease cannot be completely reversed, but there are medications and drugs that are available which can lessen the effects. So, but as this pain lessens, the patient will experience insensitive feet, but it will also be painless for them. So that's when you need to definitely watch out for the ulcers on their lower extremities. All right, until recent years, uh, treatment for polyneuropathy involved treating the, the pain symptoms, as well as reversing the neuro neuropathic process uh, through drug use. Um, though there really aren't any drugs that will repair dying nerve tracts, most have been geared toward relieving pain symptoms of neuropathy. In most recent years, physical therapists uh, began pushing for exercise and physical rehabilitation to not only staunch the gradual death of peripheral nerves, but astonishingly, or maybe not, prove that they could be stimulated uh, to regenerate, which is pretty amazing, really. Um, the old paradigms. Uh, the old paradigms were to keep a diabetic patient safe and still and comfortable um, don't encourage them to move too much for fear of damaging tissue, uh, skin, outer parts of the foot, uh, toes, elbows, things anywhere where they would knock into walls or um, furniture or that type of thing. Um, extremities, fingers, um, um, for instance, um, cooking. Um, sometimes maybe if you're somebody who likes to use your fingers while cooking by a stove, you might get burned and not even realize it. Um, recent studies, however, have shown that tissues in DPN patients one thought, once thought to have reduced tissue repairing abilities after exercise and weight bearing are now revealing an ability to repair properly with gradually increased impact exercise and weight bearing with detailed monitoring of the patient's safety to prevent unnecessary injury. It's very important um, that the caution, the cautiousness with uh, therapists working with uh, a DPN patient is, is careful and, and um, pays attention to uh, the patient's movements uh, so they don't accidentally hit something or, or damage some tissue. Um, physical therapists found that the tissue, tissues they were trying to protect actually show marked improvement 
through weight-bearing exercise and reasonable overload of physical stress. Uh, once again, use it or lose it rings true, proving the human body was not only designed for movement, but also was designed with movement to keep it going, to keep it thriving and surviving. Um, the body wants to uh, maintain homeost homeostasis. Uh, movement, exercise, it could be said, is not merely good for the body, but is essential to survive, to survival. With the load-bearing exercising, PTs found that, that the tissues of a diabetic's body become more able to handle the stress from exercise as they exercise. So it's uh, cumulative. They, they get a little tougher, uh, the tissues get a little tougher and they can take more the more they do it. Furthermore, exercise and endurance training prevent the onset and reduce of the progression of DPN, which is um, kind of really, really cool. Um, important exercises and studies which seem to have the most effect were those based on balance and strengthening of the motor and sensory symptoms. Um, it, uh, working on balance and, and motor strengthening helps prevent the, sy the symptoms. Uh, balance can be challenging for diabetics to do. Um, and uh, let's see, to lo the, the loss of sensory, especially in the lower extremities. Imagine yourself walking on stilts two feet high. You can't feel the distal two feet that rest on the ground, and yet you need to be able to sense where you place your feet while keeping your center of gravity in stable position. It's kind of a challenge. It needs to be mentioned that working with neuro neuropathy patients definitely requires caution. Delivering good education on self-care and keeping, keeping an eye on the, on the patient's vital signs, as well as to make sure their feet, and depending on the activity, their hands are well protected with shoes and possibly even gloves during exercise. Thanks for watching our presentation.